Hello everyone. In the previous video on optimization, we have seen that for all the numerical optimization techniques, we need gradients of our cost function L, and sometimes we also need the Hessian of that cost function with respect to the optimization variables W. In order to get this information, so the gradient and the Hessian, we have basically three different options in order to obtain it which is the symbolic differentiation, the algorithmic differentiation, and the numerical differentiation, also called finite differentials. We will have distinct follow-up videos on symbolic differentiation and automatic or algorithmic differentiation, and this video should be in particular about the numerical differentiation as the most simple and straightforward approach in order to get information about the gradient as well as the Hessian. So in this video we are going to discuss how we can get the gradient and the Hessian based on numerical differentiation and we will discuss pro and con arguments why we should or shouldn't do that. So what's the basic principle behind numerical differentiation? I would like to illustrate that with a little sketch. So let's say we have a cost function L of W which has for example, such a cost landscape for some parameter wi. And let's say we are interested in getting the gradient or the partial derivative at this point uh, here of the cost function. So what we actually want to have is we want to have the tangent in this point which would be one element of the gradient for the uh, gradient of L of W. And the finite differences now try to approximate this tangent by a secant. So what we do is we go a little step, for example, forward. We call that step, step size H. And what we do is we evaluate the cost function also at this point here. And what we do is we calculate or determine the secant through these two points. So through our evaluation point where we actually want to get the tangent from, so the partial derivative, and the forward point by the step size h. And by evaluating these two points, we can basically calculate the secant in a, a computer program and then what we do is we utilize the secant information as an approximation of the tangent. And that is called finite differences or to be precise the forward mode of finite difference because from our evaluation point we go a step forward by the step size h in order to draw the secant. We can also do the same in the backward fashion, let's say we go the step size h backwards and we would draw the secant in this direction. So that would be the secant in the backward mode. That was the secant here in the forward mode. And we could of course also utilize that in order to approximate the tangent and even we could in the so-called centralized variant, I will not sketch it due to uh, space constraint, but we could also calculate the line between these two evaluation points at plus h and minus h, which would be the so-called centralized approach of finite differences. However, the key element of all three methods is that utilizing a certain step size, we will use secants through two points in order to approximate the tangents as elements of the gradient, or if we do that twice, of the Hessian. So let's write down this graphical sketch here in a mathematical formula. So what we do in finite differences is we approximate the partial derivative of our cost function with respect to some element wi by this approximation through the secant, which is L of w plus h times ei minus l of w divided by our step size h. 
And EI, this year, that is the east unit vector. So pointing into this direction of our optimization parameter WI, right? So here we did not draw uh, EI into because we just sketched L of W over this one parameter WI, right? So if we ha have up to Q different input parameters, we would need to apply this approximation Q times for every element of the input or parameter vector. So that would be the approximation for one element of the gradient. And if we want to utilize finite differences for one element of the Hessian matrix, we need to uh, extend that. So we would calculate the second partial derivative of L with respect to Wi and Wj, right? So one element of the Hessian matrix. And in this forward difference manner, that would be one over H square times, open the parenthesis, L of W plus H times EI plus H times EJ minus L of W plus H times EI minus L of W plus H times EJ and last but not least plus L of W and close the parenthesis. So that would be our approximation of the partial derivative as an element of the gradient and that would be our approximation of one element of the Hessian matrix. And what I've sketched here in both cases is a so-called forward mode where we basically go a little step size into the forward direction of this east um, unit vector. We could also write that down into the backward mode or into the centralized mode, but we leave that out just due to time and space constraints. So if we evaluate this scheme of applying finite differences to approximating the gradient and the Hessian, we can basically conclude that there are several uh, pro and con arguments in order to do so. What are the pro arguments of doing so? Let's start with them. So obviously, uh, what we need in order to do that is we just need access to the cost function, right? We do not need more and we just need to evaluate the cost function at different input points. So we need to uh, evaluate it at W, at W plus H times EI and so on. So we just need the optimization function as a computer code to be executed. And of course that is somehow a simplistic requirement and that means that finite differences are quite generalizable and quite simple to be applied. So simple and easy to apply. However, this simplicity and easiness of being applicable comes at a certain cost and these are the con arguments against using finite differences. The first con argument, uh, I hope it comes quite um, easy from looking at the equations here is that if I want to evaluate L of W and L of W uh, plus H times EI, that this leads to a lot of function evaluations. Here for the gradient, if I consider that W is a parameter with up to Q elements, that would require that for the gradient of L, we would need to evaluate the function Q plus one times. Function calls. For one element here of the Hessian, or for all elements of the Hessian to be precise, so uh, the Hessian of L, we would even need Q square plus one function calls in order to do that. So this means we need to process a lot of computational power to evaluate these functions in our optimization solver, and especially if we have many parameters W, so many parameters Q, we need to evaluate this function very, very often. 
And maybe if L is also costly, so if there is maybe some numerical model underlying, like a partial di uh, di differential equation, that will need a lot of computational power. Moreover, this is just an approximation, right? So we approximate the partial derivatives by the finite differences, and that means we will have certain error. And there are two sources of error. The first error source comes already quite visible from this little sketch. That is, if I use a secant in order to approximate the tangent, there will be some truncation error due to this uh, going away from our evaluation point. So we have the truncation error as an error of approximation. We have another error which comes from evaluating these gradient information, Hessian information based on a computer because a computer has a finite um, possibility of numerical approximation. So that means even if I make h very small, that will lead to numerical rounding errors because I'm going into the limits of the numerical precision the computer can deal with. So even making h very small will not lead to an accurate approximation because then this rounding error goes through the roof. So therefore, any finite difference approximation of the gradient and the Hessian comes at the negative cost of accuracy or lacking of accuracy. So therefore, the finite differences approaches, although it's quite simple and easy to apply, is normally not the go-to approach in machine learning or optimization approaches for dynamical system identification uh, because due to this approximation errors and computational um, demand. So that's why in the follow-up videos we will look into the alternatives which are symbolic differentiation and algorithmic differentiation to see what uh, possible advantages or disadvantages these alternatives have in comparison to finite differences. Thank you for watching and seeing you in the next video.